That's cool. I wanted to ask you about the UFC journey because I don't see a lot of information about, I mean, I see very little information about how you started out and when this thing became like a reality that you're going to be a full-time fighter. Right. So it was, yeah. So like going into it, I, I get just to start off, a lot of people uh, think it's like super easy, you know, becoming a, like an MMA fighter, like making money as a pro. You'd be surprised how many calls I get. Like, cause I work, I work at my gym as well. So I, tr I train people and I work the front desk. So I like answer calls and stuff, you know, uh, just so when I'm like not fighting, I'm in the gym still like, and I'm like working there, training people and making some money, like doing personal training and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it was, sometimes we get calls to the gym, people being like, I want to, I want to fight, make money. I want to like make, no you know what I'm saying? I want to support my like family or whatnot, like good intentions, but like, yeah it's a long journey going up to it. Like nowadays you have to have nine amateur fights in Ohio in order to be, uh, in, in order to even like ask to be professional. To be so you got a conversation, right. To be in, like, yeah, even, exactly. Yeah. So like you have to, you can't just be like, I'm a pro fighter and like, you got to be licensed by the Ohio athletic commission. So like you have to send them, Hey, I'd like to go pro. They got to look over your record. And they got to be like, all right, you fought him, you fought him, and that's yeah. a good. Like, and you have to have a positive record out of those nine fights. So if you're uh, like three and I'm two know, and five whatever, and fighting in downtown Windsor, is that like? Yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> like it'd be tough for like with that kind of record to be tough to go pro. You know, right. like they gotta. You can go out of state. Some other states have different rules, so you can go yeah. out of state and go pro. But in Ohio, like we got a nine fight rule. Before it was five fights, so like I was part of that five fight rule. I got my four amateur wins and then I got a lot of people that like didn't want to fight me. So it was hard for me to find a fight. Uh, so we actually petitioned to go pro early. So with four fights under my belt, uh, Stipe and my coaches like sent a letter to the, uh, the president of the Ohio athletic commission. And uh, he was, you know, gracious enough to let me go pro. And then I went four and in the pro in the pro division. And uh, I got that call up to the contender series. I had a, you know, good management and they, uh, got me in there in the That's conversation. Beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, big, big fight camp going into that, got that flying knee, that Huge. flying knee finish. And like, you know, yeah, you say four and oh, but you were four and oh finishing guys. It's not just, yeah, four and was... some guys can go four and oh, and they still might not get the contract if it's like boring or decision yeah. fights. Right. Yeah. So it was leading up to, I was four and oh with, all four fights being finishes within the first or second round. And, uh, yeah, I went into that fight, got the, luckily got the flying knee finish. And then, uh, steep, actually calls Dana white after the fight, right. like directly after the fight. And he kind of puts like that extra little oomph on it. Like yeah, the, yeah. the icing on the icing on Belt. the cake. Steep, calls. Hey, let my guy in the UFC yeah, right now. Like, exactly. that. <laughs> Deep voice. So, like, yeah. So, and I, I actually like hit the flying knee and then I was like, so number probably the hardest thing uh, about fighting at all is like when you get that exciting finish, you uh, everybody sees like the celebration afterward. Yeah. So you, some, some guys are real smooth with it. Other guys kind of like you see the thought process go. I've seen people like botch the celebration after completely. Right. And uh, I didn't know what to do. But like I ran over to the cage and I tried to like look at Dana and like yeah. get like the, the <laughs> signature thing and like you should have pulled out was, a paper and just handed it to him at that moment like sign yeah, this right now. He was he was gone. I didn't know where he went. I was like shit. <laughs> like I don't know what I don't know where he went. Is he uh, the washroom plus come on bro yeah, don't be I the don't know. he was he was like walking away. I'm like and I was kind of like what the you know I don't know what he was doing but I guess Steve I gave him a call and like that they have his reaction right did, he, did they not he yeah, was yeah, watching yeah. and he he's was like, like yeah, he's yeah. on the phone. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> That's so it nice, wasn't man. until, yeah, it wasn't until after where I find out, like, uh, Dana actually got a call from Stipe. And then, That's beautiful. You know, 